right, so let's take a look at this squaring loop to help generate a coherent reference for demodulating a BPSK signal. So here is the block diagram of the uh, system that we'll be looking at, which is the squaring loop. So there's some modulated signal at the input, so very similar to the last video in that we have you know, fixed frequency omega c, a fixed theta, but now the amplitude is randomly toggling between a positive amplitude and a negative amplitude. We're gonna run that through a squarer and then a bandpass filter. And then we're gonna mix the bandpass filter output, here's our mixer, with the signal on this branch and that product ends up going through a low pass filter and then again into a voltage controlled oscillator. And the output is again, a reference waveform of the frequency we want, omega c, and an estimate theta hat that hopefully perfectly matches the theta of the input. So our goal here, again, is to walk through all the pieces of this block diagram and make sure that the input to the VCO is proportional in some way to the difference between theta hat and theta, so the VCO will make its adjustments to track the input phase like we need it to. So let's walk through a slightly more complicated block diagram now. We have to you know, trace it all the way around to make sure this input is what we want it to be. So squaring loop analysis. So first of all, what is the input? The input was this modulated cosine, plus or minus square root two, A cosine, fixed frequency and theta. And that first of all went through the squaring operation. So we'll go through a squaring operation and if we square that, we'll get 2a squared cosine squared. And then I can use a trig identity, right? Cosine squared is 1 half times the quantity 1 plus cosine of twice the argument. So the 1 half and the 2 canceled, and then cosine of twice the argument. So this will be the output of the squaring operation. And then our band pass filter. So this is what goes through the band pass filter. That band pass filter is set up to pass out the component at two omega c. So it's gonna reject this DC component, okay? And the output is gonna be proportional to this. So in the rest of the math here, I'm gonna use some lambdas to indicate that there probably was some gain term here. When you go through a band pass filter, there's gonna be some gain applied at whatever frequency um, you're working at, but we're not going to worry about the exact numbers. The overall functionality is what we're trying to trace through here. And what the bandpass filter does is it rejects DC and it passes things at the frequency of interest. This case, the frequency of interest was 2 omega c. So what comes out is 2 omega c, but then some arbitrary kind of amplitude scaling. All right, so I get that out the output. What about the output of the VCO? The output of the VCO has the form root two beta cosine omega ct plus theta hat. So we're now gonna take that and kind of trace it in that feedback path around up towards the mixer, okay? So RFT went through its own squaring and its own bandpass filter. So you can kind of see what's gonna happen. A very similar thing here happens that did up here. We square it and then we use our trig identity, and then we run it through the bandpass filter. So what ends up coming out has a very similar form here. The only difference being it's cosine two omega ct plus two theta hat, okay? The output of the bandpass filter went through a 90 degree phase shifter. So now this goes through a phase shifter, which means we're gonna shift it by pi over two. And then I can use my trig identity, just like I did in the previous video, cosine shifted by pi over two is minus sine. So we've kind of worked our way through that feedback path and it's really these two pieces, this piece right here and this piece right here that are the inputs to the mixer. So if I wanna know what the output of the mixer is, I need to multiply this times this. So let's go ahead and do that. The output of the mixer is that product. So it's that cosine term times that negative sine term, which I can write like this. So let's go ahead and bring all the constants out front. And then yeah, cosine of alpha times sine of beta. One of the trig identities we can use is 
It's the sine of the difference plus cosine of the sum. So that's the trig identity that I used. So on the sine of the difference, the two omega c's go away, they subtract out. And then cosine of the sum, everything adds. So two omega c t plus two omega c t is four omega c t. And then I have a two theta plus a two theta hat. So this is the output of the mixer. And then after our low pass filter, what do we end up with? We end up with something that looks like proportional to sine of this difference. So again, just thinking very high level, low pass filter is going to completely block all of this, right? This is a very high frequency term. And what I'm going to end up with is sine. And then again, some other arbitrary number gets thrown on top there. So I just kind of lumped all these arbitrary constants into this new K constant. Okay. So the output of the low-pass filter is k sine 2 theta minus 2 theta hat, which is great because, look, this is something that is proportional to the difference between theta and theta hat. It's proportional to the sine of their difference, but still, that's, that's a good thing. So the input to the VCO looks very similar to what we had in the last video. The input is some number sine two times the difference between theta and theta hat. So the same behavior as before. What if theta and theta hat match perfectly? Then this difference is zero, sine of zero is zero, and the input to my VCO is zero, which says don't make any adjustments. You're locked on, okay? So input is proportional to the sine of the angle difference. That's exactly what we want. So our VCO is going to be able to adjust its output theta hat as this difference changes. If it's above zero, it'll make an adjustment. If it's below zero, it'll make an adjustment always to minimize this magnitude of the difference between theta and theta hat. So very similar analysis to what we did in the last video. The only difference here is because it was a modulated signal up front, we had to do some squaring. And because of that squaring, we have these high frequency terms that we were then able to take advantage of. And those are what we then kind of band pass filtered and latched onto. But very similar strategy in terms of trying to get the appropriate input to the VCO. One thing that you can note here, we're not going to go through the analysis, but it is important to note that this squaring loop has a pi radian phase ambiguity. What does that mean? That means if theta hat is equal to theta plus pi, or theta minus pi, this difference won't be zero, but it will be off by pi radians, and the sine of pi is zero. So you have to be careful. When we say that these loops are locked because sine you know, of the quantity was zero, because of the way sine works, sometimes you can be off by pi radians, sine of that quantity is zero, and your VCO thinks it's locked, and it's not. It's really locked on to a phase ambiguity. Again, there are ways to break that ambiguity and other approaches that can you know, figure out if you're off. We're not going to go into them um, on this video or our other videos. I just wanted to note that, though, so you're aware that some approaches can lock onto ambiguities, and that's something you need to watch out for. All right, that's it for now. In the next video, we'll also look at a synchronization loop related to BPSK. It's called a Costas loop. The Costas loop does something very similar to this in that it you know, generates a coherent reference that's needed um, to do your coherent reception. However, the Costas loop is interesting because in addition to generating that coherent reference, it also shifts signals down to baseband and provides kind of like a demodulated output as well. So the Costas loop is interesting in that it does you know, coherent reference generation and demodulation all in one block diagram. So watch the next video to take a look at that.